Hi everyone, welcome to On the Other Hand. I'm Ariane Zercher and today I'm going to be demonstrating the double cast on stitch. This was one of the first stitches along with the pistol stitch that I did when I was working with Sue Spargo on developing videos for her Insta Stitch with Sue project. I was doing them left, the stitches she was using, I was showing, demonstrating them left-handed and she was doing hers on Instagram for right-handed. But since Sue is removing all of those videos as of August 1st, I am getting a jump on things and starting to redo the videos that cover stitches that I haven't done in-depth stitches on. So the double cast on stitch is one of them. Don't forget to hit the like button, click on that subscribe button and the little bell that pops up for email notifications. Leave me comments in the comment section. I love hearing from you and grab something to stitch with, a needle and some thread, and let's explore the double cast on stitch. For the double cast on stitch, I'm threading a number five weight Sue Spargo's Variegated Eleganza thread. It's EZM27. I'm threading that onto a number one Milner's needle. Because it's a wrap stitch, a Milner's needle is what is needed. Instead of doing a single strand, I'm doing a double strand. So I'm going to go ahead and do a Coulter's knot on a double strand. I need to keep my strand at least as long as the length of the leg that I'm going to be doing. I'm also going to use Sue Spargo's. This is her spoke easy. I want to do a double cast on that has five spokes. So what I do is if you haven't used her spoke easy, it's really a great tool. You lay it over your circle and then with your chalk pencil, you can draw lines. She has one of these plastic templates for five spokes up to ten spokes. So there it is and you can see my chalk guide now. I'm going to come up at the farther end or in the center, whichever whichever one. It doesn't it doesn't really matter. I'm going to go into my center. I'm not going to go into the totally into the center because I'm going to have them sort of just touch. I want to separate my thread out. So I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to come up right in between where that those two threads part right in the middle. If I get a tangle here, I'm going to twist my needle so that it's untwisted like this. It helps if you have a wool pad of some kind that you can sort of press your needle into. It just makes it a little easier. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast on. I'm going to do a cast on on this side, but on this side, instead of casting on in the same way, I'm going to twist it the opposite way. And this is something that I learned through trial and error. If I do it the same way, my cast on is going to do a twist and I don't want that. I want it to lay flat. So here's my twist here. This one, instead of doing the same, which would be this way, I'm actually going to twist it the opposite way. And in this way, the double cast on really is not hand specific. It doesn't matter which hand is the dominant hand, whether you're left-handed or right-handed, because you're going to be doing a twist, which for me would be the left-handed way, which is this way. But on this side, I'm going to do, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do it the opposite way, which I think would be probably the right-handed cast on. So I'm alternating. I want to keep casting on the same number of cast ons per side. I want to have an even number. And I also want to make sure that I have enough to cover this distance. So I don't have enough yet. What I do is I hold these with my right hand. If you're left-handed, you're going to hold it with your right. If you're right-handed, you're going to hold it with your left. And I'm going to pull my needle through. And that is my double cast on. I'm going to go ahead and do this for all five of my spokes. And I'll show you what it looks like when I've done that. There is my five-spoked 
double cast on stitch. All right, so I'm doing every other, I'm doing the silken pearl. I'm doing a double cast on, just a little one at the every other end of every other spoke here. And that's Merlin licking a plastic bag. Why does he do such things? Who knows? He loves licking plastic bags. So I'm doing four on each side, a total of eight. So they're really little. Pull these pretty tight. So, okay, so I'm making my little loop here. I do this, I make a really tiny little bite, as Sue would say. And I come up there. So one on each side. Here's my second and my second on the right. And here's my third and my third on the right. And my fourth and my fourth on the right. this through. Sometimes in order to get this really tight, I kind of put my needle in between and then pull the threads so that it makes my little loop. I'm using my number eight EZM 96 variegated eleganza. I'm going to do a double cast on with a number three Milner's. I could have done my bouillonnette needle as well. And I'm starting at the edge here of my knot center. I'm going more towards the bottom and I'm gonna come right up to the end here for my double cast on.
so that's about 20 each. And now I'm going to pull this through. my one. I'm now going to come back to where this first stitch began in the center here. And I'm going to do another one just over here. I ended up doing 17 double cast-ons with my number eight eleganza covering this whole little shape. I'm now going to do a double cast-on using this thread, which is Razzle, and it's RZM18. It's a slightly variegated, creamy color. And I'm going to go here from this end of this shape to this end of the shape. And I think I'm just going to do three. When I do this, I like to have my needle come right in the middle of the two threads. I'm using a bouillon needle, it's a little bit longer, and I need that length for this long shape. shorter. So here's my double cast on in the Rosal thread. This is the double cast on in the number eight weight Eleganza. Here are my little cast on buttons in the Silk and Pearl. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to hit the like button. Click on the subscribe button and the little bell that pops up for email notifications. I love hearing from you. Leave me comments in the comments section and check out the description section where I'll leave links for all these different threads that I've used in today's video. Until next time, here's to stitching together.